So when I was in elementary school, um, I mean, I, I studied math like everybody else, the, the sort of basics that, um, that we learned at school, and um, found that there was there's something about it which, uh, you know, it, it's, it was greater than I am. It wasn't that um, one person had decided that this is how it was going to be. It was more that um, collectively we'd kind of slowly come to a better understanding of something that has always been there. And so I really appreciated and kind of um, was in awe of that idea. And at the same time, I was uh, playing a lot of music, I think, uh, as, a, as a young kid, and um, fascinated in how our ear and our brain and our mind works, given all of this kind of stimulus coming in. So for me, it was kind of a, a, a natural um, the meeting of these two worlds, a little bit of math and a little bit of perception. You smash them together, and you kind of land in color science. Uh, before I started uh, working in motion picture film, um, I did some uh, challenging, some people would say some silly things. Uh, uh, I used to engage in a lot of uh, mountaineering, high altitude climbing. Um, and uh, on one of these expeditions um, at high altitude, I suffered uh, an injury to the retina on my left eye. Uh, it's a retinal hemorrhage. So basically the retina was bleeding and, and uh, became damaged. Um, and it wasn't painful, but during the process, uh, I was completely fascinated with um, what was happening to my visual system. I was able to sort of see, oh, something's not right, and this is different and new. And then I was able to compare, oh, my left eye is different to my right eye, and if I kind of move my head this way, I can see these weird things I've never seen before. And so um, it, was a, it was a weird sense of kind of ob objective analysis of what was going on, despite the fact that it was, in some senses, a medical emergency. We were far away from hospitals and those kinds of things. Um, but that was probably one of the turning points where I, I recognized that, wow, I'm, I'm really interested in the human visual system and, and what, what it can and can't do. And uh, hopefully we're, we're using that now in a way that's going to help everybody. <laughs> Computer systems engineering is um, the primary de degree I studied. Uh, engineering is um, less about the specific knowledge and more about, uh, more about knowing how to learn at speed. So a good portion of the, the degree is stress testing your ability to learn things you've never thought of before and then really put your assumptions to the test in a hurry. Um, so, you know, I, I considered the engineering kind of like a, a mixed bag of tools that can be applied to a lot of different circumstances. When I started with Pixar, uh, 35 millimeter film was still very much the, um, the predominant distribution format. You know, we used film projectors. You had a, a xenon lamp and it shone light through a, a transparency, a color transparency up onto a huge screen. Um, the chemistry of the, the color of film was very much a, a black art. Um, you know, there, there wasn't, it was very sophisticated and there were few players in the field sort of supplying the materials that we needed. And so for us to gain insight into how better to control the color on film, um, it was a real challenge. So we, we went back to first principles. We uh, analyzed the film at a really low level. I mean, we, we kind of stretched and pushed and pulled it in every possible exposure way possible and measured everything that we could find about the film until we came to, um, I guess, a, a state where we knew more about how to, how to influence the film than the people who were selling it to us. We were able to do things with it that they didn't even know were possible. Um, I am... Uh, communicating with the artists, the, the directors of photography, um, the lighting leads, and the folks who are uh, responsible for implementing the color decisions of the studio. Um, and I'm, I'm working with them to better understand what they're trying to achieve. Often this is, you know, one, two, three years in advance of them doing the work. Um, they have an idea in their head of what they'd like to try. It might be something that no one's ever seen before. Uh, my job then is to sort of translate those requirements and turn them into um, a pipeline or a platform or a set of steps and processes that we can gain confidence is going to work um, when the clock's ticking and we don't have a lot of time to sort of finish this work or to, to sort of iterate many times on a creative idea. So I, I kind of build the foundation of, uh, of the pieces necessary to, to allow those artists to really express themselves in a way that's repeatable. Things that are happening in, um, in the world of motion picture film. So for on the exhibition side, you go to the cinema uh, and there's a, a digital projector today. That's how, we, uh, that's how we experience our films on the big screen. Um, the next generation of digital projectors is using red, green, and blue lasers to illuminate the scene. So all of a sudden we can get these really, really saturated colors. Um, 
way out on the spectral locus. So the most saturated things that humans can perceive, we can now create some of those with these laser projectors. Um, and there's also new opportunities, I think, uh, for some of our filmmakers to potentially um, show you colors that quite literally you've never seen before. Everything that you have a passion for has a value in this world and, and people are going to continue to tell you that um, this is not cool or this is not popular. You know, in my case, uh, it was math and music. They you know, still aren't necessarily the most um, socially upheld, kind of you know, revered <laughs> pursuits. Um, but you, know, you can find a way easily where that makes a real difference for somebody, that you can, you, know, you can harness that passion and turn it into something that really makes a difference in the world.